So I'll just summarise uh, the different analyses and tests that we've covered in the whole of the afternoon. So for continuous data, if we can assume that it's normally distributed, to compare two groups, we would do a t-test, either a two-sample or independent or unpaired t-test. If the groups were paired, then well, there's something called the paired t-test or one-sample t-test. For comparing three or more groups, and I'd do analysis of variance. But if you're in a situation where your data are not normally distributed, then you're wanting to do non-parametric tests, you can base these on the ranks. So there's that Mann-Whitney U-test, which is also equivalently called the Wilcox and Rank Sum Test. To compare paired data, then there's slightly different to the Wilcox and Rank Sum Test, is the Wilcox and Assigned Rank Test. And then we've got the Criscoll wallace Test, if there's three or more groups to compare the overall equality. For binary and categorical data, it's the same thing really. Chi-squared tests, Fisher's exact tests. And there's this McNamara's test that you can use if you've got paired data or logistic regression, but I haven't really covered those. In three or more groups, then you can still use the chi-squared test, Fisher's exact test, for both binary and categorical data. For ordered data, you've got the option, you know, you can do the mantle heinzel test to compare two groups or you can treat if you've got sort of quite a lot of categories ordered categories five or more then you can treat it as continuous scale but use the ranks so the Wilcox and rank sum test is one to consider I uh, should have put the man Whitney U test they're both the same so I, I need to change that and for pairs of data then the Wilcox and signed rank test is appropriate. So you're just treating the data as ranked rather than categorical. And because you're treating it as ranked, you can use the Criscoll Wallace test if there's five or more outcomes. And also there's this other method that we haven't properly covered yet, logistic regression, which is sort of one of the key ways of analysing ordinal data, where you actually can use a model. And as we'll see next time, there's advantages, potential advantages in doing that. And lastly, um, if you've got time to an event, which may or may not happen, and I said this log rank test was the one to use, if there's a grouping in the data and you've got paired data, then it's a bit more complex, but there are other forms of survival analysis that can be used. If you're just comparing three or more groups, then again, the log rank test can cope with that as well. So I think with all these tests, it's just a question of knowing what's appropriate for each situation and then learning to judge which one to choose. I think it is confusing that they all have these strange names, but I think it's just a case of getting them in your head, which ones are appropriate and knowing the things to watch out for. This also is just to give a flavour for next time. We've just been doing simple comparisons today, and that's the kind of building blocks of statistical testing and modelling. But there may be reasons to sort of consider something more sophisticated. For example, there might be structure in the data. We, we have looked a bit at paired data and looked at how to cope with that. There might be groupings in the data. Animals might be grouped by cages or areas. You might have an experiment where you're looking at um, plates, making measurements on different plates, and so the data are grouped in the plates. Sometimes I've found people repeat, they do an experiment, say on 12 mice, and then they repeat it to make sure they get the same results, and then try and combine them. So there's you know, that structure to take into account. Key structure, which um, is quite important to think carefully about is when you've got repeated measurements taken on the same animal or the same unit over time and thinking about how to analyse that. Sometimes you're in a situation where it might be not, you're not just asking do the groups differ significantly, it might be whether they differ significantly after allowing for confounding factors. It might be, do they differ significantly across different areas or within different areas, experiments, across the different time points. So it's, it's not quite as straightforward as just doing simple comparisons. Or you might, as we saw on one of the slides, want to actually do a prediction from a set of measurements, not just to prove a hypothesis. So all this um, can be addressed 
uh, we're usually addressed using statistical modeling. So we're going to extend some of these models and tests to more general models. So that will be what we'll mainly look at next time. There'll be quite a lot covered, but I think it's probably a good idea to sort of expose you to all the different types of models that are available, even if you don't understand all the exact details. So that's what I'll be doing next week.